right, welcome back. Um, essentially, pretty much a part two of where we left off last week. Um, yeah, we... Thank you all for your beautiful, kind messages. Um, it's it's gone a little bit bigger than what we thought it, <laughs> it did. Um, heaps just, of people have viewed it. Heaps of people have um, messaged us. And the support out there is amazing. Absolutely. There's, people um, reaching out, people. Yeah, thank you to everybody. Um, yeah, means a lot for all your support. Yeah, like we said, we're not after any sympathy. It's just our story. Um, we're we're not, not blaming anybody else. It is what it is, it's happened. Um, it's just a story that we're telling you now. So, anyway. It's taken us a long time to be able to get the courage to tell this yes, story. Yes, it has been hard. Um, even getting all the messages from you guys, um, reading them, it hasn't really been that easy. I, I tried to get back to as many people as I could, um, but it blew up that much that I couldn't reply to everyone. So if I haven't replied to you, I do apologize, but um, we're moving on anyway, so. All right. We're gonna kick it off? How are we gonna kick this off? All right, so we've got a few ant questions that you guys have asked that we didn't clarify in the last episode. So we'll start off with the snorkel. All right, why didn't I have a snorkel on? I spend 300 odd thousand dollars on a car and not put a snorkel on it. I put travel around Australia, with no snorkel on it. First mod you should do to a car is put a snorkel on it. We know all this. Yes, um, I, I understand, I know, I get it. It was my biggest worry, that and the front bar with no protection for hitting roos. Um, those were my two biggest worries. Um, we weren't gonna go through water to damage the car, um, but the road that we were on happened to have some on it after some heavy rains and um, it, it gave way on us and it can happen like that and that's why we're telling you the story um i've looked at so regarding every, the snorkel yeah so regarding the snorkel everybody keeps saying how easy it is to put a snorkel on the car yes i can get a snorkel made yes i can get an air box made but with these f trucks they suck so much air with the with the big engine that once their snorkel and that's on it needs to be retuned it needs to be um all of this stuff that needs to happen to the car afterwards so is that it it's sucking air from a higher point and yes it does make a difference yes i know for a fact that it does need to be done um, and i need a five inch snorkel there are people out there that were making four inch um, the all for adventure boys they had their f truck they had a um, dual um, snorkel on it i rang that company and they turned around to me and said, no, sorry, we're not doing that for the public at the moment. And then I got a company to call them and ask them about it. And they turned around and said, no, we're not doing it. It's too bloody hard to get into the quarter panel. So we're not doing that just yet, unless there's gonna be a bigger market for it. We also got the guy from the Formula One cars to see if he could engineer something. Yes, a local engineer in here that we know of, um, that does all the racing around Perth, all the um, race cars and stuff like that. He looked into it and he said that he can't do it at this stage. Um, so yeah, we have, I've inquired to three or four other companies over east. Even and there was guys around Perth that we asked to do it, but no one had done it. And we don't want to be the guinea pig either. Like we want to make sure you know, you're putting an airbox and a snorkel on our car that you actually have it properly engineered and we knew that it was going to be the right work for our car. And yes, you can turn around and say, well, not being a guinea pig backfired. Yes, it has. But at the same stage, I don't just want to chuck any snorkel on the car either. The car is set up to look and do exactly. what we want. Um, so it needed to fit into that category as well. Um, and it needed to perform. So you chuck a four inch in there, the math sensor throws up codes, all of this sort of stuff happens because it's not getting enough oxygen. It's not just like you've got a 200 or 300 series where it comes with a standard snorkel, well, not a standard snorkel, but you can get, you the know. The Safari snorkel whacked on it or the stainless steel just whacked on it. It's, it's not as easy as that with these F trucks, so. We have actually, we actually have found somebody that is going to do the snorkel for us and it oh that's a carton <laughs> left your phone on during a youtube <laughs> sorry um yeah so we have found someone that does snorkels and it was actually booked in three weeks after our accident we were talking to these guys yeah. and yeah it's it is it's happened yes i didn't have a snorkel on there yes 
that's on me um, but we couldn't get one basically so yeah the car was only six months old as well so it took us a lot of research to find the right person and the car is still evolving so there are other things that we're doing to the car snorkel was on the top of the list so yeah that we were doing to the car <laughs> yeah all right so um so that's the snorkel i hope we've clarified that with you guys um the plb um that that one was a company called rescue me um we showed you where we got it we got it from the full drive shop um it was on sale for us um but there are other companies gme make one um the zolios the garmin's um all of that sort of stuff there are options out there i just bought my dad a zoli is it Zolio or whatever it, yeah, is. whatever it is because um, he's heading off to travel around Australia and he's he's very um, technical savvy and he's said it's really user friendly the plan's great you can turn the plant on and off when you're not traveling so yeah so that's some good feedback for you yeah but if you want to know anything we have done a little bit of research in them not a great deal um, so if you want any information on that hit us up and we'll uh, give you everything that we've got about it um the insurance company we are not here to name and shame anybody um that's not what we're here to do we're literally here to tell you our story yeah we don't want to talk. and it'll the insurance company will clear all that up by the end of this um episode. episode um a lot of people have bagged the insurance company out and we probably left it at a stage where um their opinion sort of sounded like that yeah but. and we didn't mean that we didn't mean to um make anybody look bad or anything like that but We'll cover all that in this video anyway. Um, the kids' thoughts about what's happened. Yeah, look, we, um, after the accident happened, we put the kids into school. And to be honest, it really didn't... They're, they're pretty resilient kids. They, um, they they ride with the bumps. You know, we've been travelling, so they... We, we sheltered them as well from exactly the dangers that we were in and yeah. when still to today like the kids aren't even here with us talking about it um they know they know that the car's broken and that um lani says that daddy's car drove through a muddy puddle <laughs> so they, they know what's happened and that we haven't got a car at the moment um so they they know the basics but we didn't let them into too much of the dramas of the fear of what we had the um even what what we're going through now is um we, we try not to put any stress on them we try not to let them know too much and yeah so um yeah so that's the kids we, we've had a pretty tough six months our middle child was quite ill um diagnosed with a serious condition and um i guess that was more our focus over the last six months dealing with everything um next question so um, are we stopping traveling um no. so we've, we've recently so we're sitting in our home at the moment our lotus 23.3 foot triple bunk caravan um people we've put it up for sale um but that was always going up for sale and we are getting a new one so this is it was um February, March, we're due for, well not due, but we're upgrading this caravan to a new one and it's time for this one to be sold. So if you're interested, yeah, it's for sale. <laughs> Hit us up if you are interested. Um, it's only done six months of travel and then the last six months has been pretty much parked up at family's home. So And it's only done a little bit of the WA coast. It hasn't yeah. been down any hardcore full drive no, tracks. It didn't or... do the gib that we we're planning on doing. Um, it it's done, done a few of the gravel tracks to and from tracks in Exmouth, but nothing hardcore and it's it's basically brand new still. So if you are interested in the caravan, let us know, but we are not stopping traveling, no. All right, so we're gonna actually head over to Victoria in February and then do South Australia and Queensland, but our plans always change, so yeah, yeah. we don't know. Anyway. All right, so let's, let's uh, go. Are we going to do a big reveal of what, what the new car what is? What is our new car? Oh, kids are coming outside. They might interrupt us, but um, what is our new car? Well, let's hold off for that for one second. Um, picking up where we left off last week. Um, so the insurance company rang us. The, they said that it was, this was on the Friday, the insurance company rang us, the car's written off. And um, basically they said, that's your only option. And 
We verbally, we verbally accepted that and said, okay, if that's our only option, then... Um, well, it wasn't our only option, but it was the option that... Well, we could buy back the car and fix it ourselves, like we said. But um, So that's where we're at. They, um, and they said, okay, no worries. We're going to send you all the paperwork. You should have it by Monday. Sign it. Once you've signed it, the car's officially written off and um, we'll pay you out. And that's when we announced it on social media and that the car was going to be written off and heaps of people got in contact like we said and give us so much information we we got a hold of a lawyer um got a hold of other insurance company people um just people. got gathered as much information as what we could and we basically found out that um we spoke to this lady um i don't actually know her name but if she's watching she spent about an hour on the phone to us and gave us the world of knowledge that we're so grateful for because yeah. we wouldn't be in this position if she wasn't there to support us through it um so thank you very much if you're watching this yeah 100 um it was amazing so she said to us listen you can you, you can actually appeal this you don't have to accept it so basically first thing monday morning um we rang up the insurance company and i spoke to the assessors that were dealing with it and I said, we don't accept it. Um, we don't believe that for what the car's worth and what its replace value is, that the car should be written off. Well, the car was still running as well at this point. Yeah, so the car drove. Like I said, the car was the still driving. The mechanic was driving it around. Um, so they said, okay, what do you want to do? And I said, I want a senior assessor going out there and somebody that knows something about four-wheel driving and they just happened to have the two guys there. So the senior assessor and um, another fella. And we also mentioned to them about the fact that I had rung them three weeks before saying that- How much the car's worth and how much and we- They weren't willing to insure it for that. So- How much we thought the car was insured for at the time and stuff yeah, like that. So you know, that's what this lady said, you know, you have a leg to stand on. The, the lawyers said, you know, they have that on recording. So we had to gather those recordings so that we could prove that this is what we asked for and this is what the car's valued at. Um, as soon as we got that senior assessor, he was fantastic. Yeah. He literally was there the next day. Was it that day? Pretty much the next day he rocked up with him and another fella who knows full driving and at, actually follows us and knew us, knew the car before he even got there. Um, and they went through the car and he agreed with us. He said, that he said um, I'd give I, you the keys and let you drive away with the car right now. There is nothing wrong with your car. There's no water inside. There's, there's no water in the canopy. Um, there's no water from what the mechanic's saying in any of the diffs or anything like that. He goes, um, the turbo noise, yes, we can replace the turbo, which you already have. If you weren't traveling Australia, I would hand you the keys right now and you can take that car and if anything goes wrong with it in the next year or so due to water damage we'll replace it so if the engine fails we'll replace it if um the diff fails we'll we'll, we'll replace it if the training fails we'll replace it wheel bearings um anything they said that um it'll be all covered so we were given a glimmer of hopes thinking this is great and then the next pretty much thing was um, we needed to find an engine. So we all stuck our heads down and um, the mechanic. It was really quite funny because the mechanic was on the phone, I was on the phone to people, Derek was on the phone to people. So we were searching in Australia, in America, in Canada. Um, he had, the mechanic had all of his contacts. We were trying Harrison's, to get- Harrison's, F-Trucks, the people that we bought the car for, they were trying to source us um, an engine. What's the GM, what's, there was another company, company in Queensland. Was, yeah. um, everybody was trying to help us source an engine for this car and we got one we found one so very was it like the it was like the last off the one off. well they said that it was um so it's full ford factory motor so it's straight from ford factory it's um same model as mine everything's exactly the same it's brand new never ever been run it's not a reman where you um get it rebuilt and blah 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 it's brand spanking new never ever been run so we found this engine and um it was 
sent here in seven days. <laughs> Within so from the moment that the assessor walked in and agreed with us, and we ordered the engine, paid for the engine, got it to Australia. We did it. The insurance company paid for yeah, the yeah, engine yeah. at this so, stage. So we... the insurance company, we got all of the uh, quote done for getting the motor out and in, and the mechanic did a proper um, quote, sent that through to the uh, insurance company. There was a little bit of to and fro, and not only did the engine swap cost come into the budget that we had, they had enough left over that they could fly the engine over Crate. rather than um, rather than ship it. So that that cost a lot of money on its own. If if you know anything about, I think that was like fifteen thousand. Yeah, about just that. to get it crated over here. So within three weeks of that, the we had the engine in Perth in the workshop, ready to go. So this is. So end we've of got October. we've got engine. We've got turbo, we've got a full seal rebuild kit for um, all the gaskets and stuff that need to uh, be put on. And we're ready to go. So at this stage, we've gone from cars written off to full go. The car was never ever written off. So we never accepted it. It's not on the write off stat sheet because it never officially got written off. The insurance company have agreed to fix it and we've got a brand new motor going in. So. It's, it's been an absolute whirlwind. Um, yeah, it's, we're absolutely stoked. We did not want this car to get written off. We knew, I mean, we wouldn't accept a car. Like if we knew that the car had water damage and it was going to have problems later down the track and what have you not, you know, we're very knowledgeable about that sort of stuff. We wouldn't accept it. Yeah. So we knew that this car. But knowing that it was just the engine that took a mouthful in um, and we can replace that part. The whole lot, bang, in it goes. There's nothing else wrong with the car. So it's basically almost, you could wind the clock down to zero, which we haven't done. It's it's done legitimately, um, but the brand new engine, zero kilometers on it. And um, I mean, the car's only done 15,000. 17,000 kilometers the car done. And um, so the chassis and everything else, suspension, everything's done 17,000 kilometers. And the engine now is back at zero. The kilometers. mechanic's checked the diff. He's checked yeah, everything. So he's run diffs, the oils. Diffs, wheel bearings, tranny, um, transfer case. Um, what else can there be? Um, fuel, um, all of that. Everything is one hundred percent. It's it's all been assessed. So it's been pulled apart, um, like covers off, inspected properly and everything is hunky-dory it's literally just the engine so yeah. and there was no water in anything which was fantastic and the engine so some lucky bugger is going to get basically a brand new engine 17,000 kilometers sent back to america that they have to rebuild uh, as a reman which reman is they get my old engine they put all new parts in there and then they sell it as a reconditioned engine that's all a part of the swap with the new engine and um so yeah, they're going to get basically a brand new engine with a little bit of water that's been in there and we've inspected the old engine and it doesn't look that bad to be honest with you it probably could have kept running and it probably could have kept going um from from the mechanics report um that is so it's, and from the insurance as well yeah yeah so that's um that's so the new car is the, the old, old car, car. <laughs> <laughs> um and we, we didn't we didn't mean to play it out like yeah, um it wasn't about getting a new car and stuff like that it was just um it's, it's how the story is folded out so it it's happened a lot spread out than what our quick rendition is from last week and this week um we were sitting on the edge of our seats for quite some time hoping and praying that uh this is the outcome that we're going to get so the um the engine rocked up within three weeks so three months of the insurance company not um, rocking up to the car and not getting it um, sorted out so that was wasted then within one month we had everything ready to go so um, this is when I got frustrated so this is where I've gone okay this isn't cool I'm not happy with so the um, the engines here and all the parts are here we got told by the mechanic that as soon as it gets in we'll have it stripped ready to go so that you can hit the road again that was the whole idea of getting the engine flown over because everything was going to go bang straight in and the engine's been here for eight weeks and it's the 25th of january it's still not finished so the mechanic kept telling us each week yep 
I'm going to start this week. Yep, I'm going to start next week. Yep, this is the week. Yep, this is the week. Yep, then this Christmas is the week. Christmas and New Year's came. Christmas and New Year's come. And admittedly, he had other jobs in process. And it only takes one part to uh, not be there. And then you have to wait weeks on end for parts to get there. So that's basically what's happened is... Um, oh, no, we have to talk about what's happened with the engine now. Yeah, no, that's that's where we're at. So the um, the mechanic now, so the car sits. I'm going to chuck some photos up that um, that we've that we've got. So to take the engine out, really, this job should be a three week job, um, maximum. You can do it in a lot less, but I just allowed three weeks. And it, like I said, it's been eight, and this is the stage where we're at. So to get the engine out of F trucks, the whole well, I think it's all American trucks, but I could be wrong. But the whole cab gets lifted off so then you're just sitting with a chassis an engine um tranny and transfer case and then all the running gear underneath so the whole cab has to be taken off I'll, I'll post up some pictures there of it and the new engine sitting in its mounts attached to the transmission um that gets taken out the new engine gets bolted in transmission everything gets plonked back in and then um, all the stuff on top of the engine, so pulleys and um, all the exhaust and everything like that, that was originally on the, on the engine, gets all put back on. Cab comes back down, everything gets hooked up and... Everything's hunky-dory. Test driven. So where we're at at the moment is the old engine's been pulled out, the new engine's sitting in, and we've got the... So we brought the engine with the seal kit and gasket kit to go with it so that everything can be bolted up. And last week the mechanic goes to bolt up the exhaust manifolds and the wrong exhaust manifold gaskets were sent to him. They were meant to be for this engine but they have slightly changed from the old engine he said and they sent us the old ones. So now we're sitting here waiting on new gaskets to be sent over from America to be um, put on so that we can get the exhaust manifolds on and um, then I suppose the turbo and all the rest of the stuff, the exhaust hooked up to it and then the cab brought back down. So right now we are fingers crossed that they rock up this week. It's and Wednesday and tomorrow's a public holiday. It won't come this week. And then um, next week we the mechanic can uh, get stuck into putting it all back together, lowering the cab, and hopefully we are driving it by the end of next week. And uh, we've got to put a thousand kilometres on that truck to make sure that everything's fine, take it back to the mechanic, he does a full check over. If everything's fine, we're good to go. So hopefully within the next two weeks we are um, off hitting the road. Derek's been saying that since the day it happened. Yes, and I've just been relaying messages that I've been told from people that are in this process and um, unfortunately it hasn't gone that way. So it has been a bloody stressful time for us. Um, we're not passing the blame. We're not doing anything like that. It, it is what it is. It's this happened. is just our story. This yep. is what we're going through. This is what happened. It's only a car, you know, um, like I said at the start, our son was quite sick um, for a few months. He was in hospital for a week, um, trying to find out what was wrong with him and what we can do and, and stuff like that. And again, we're not after sympathy. It's just just our story. We're not uh, whinging or anything like that. It is, it is what it is. So there are worse things that have happened um, than our car getting done what had happened and there's a lot more other things in the world that are way more important than that it's just this it's just our side it's our it's story, our story. And, um, yeah so little Cobes is um, we're, we're on the right track with Cobes now um, we've, we've got a diagnose we've got um, the medicine so for he it. was I'm gonna say yeah. so Kobe was diagnosed so what happened was he was in intensive pain he couldn't walk he couldn't go to the toilet he couldn't do anything um and very scary for a parent when your child can't move um they thought he had juvenile arthritis um but he's actually being diagnosed. So we treated we treated him with yeah. juvenile arthritis and that did nothing then they thought he had something else 
and they treated him for that and that did nothing and then we finally got to the stage where so now they've diagnosed him with a neurological disease called complex regional pain syndrome and um he's on a nerve blocker um so it's a it's a nerve a neurological disease um it can be very debilitating um so just on the weekend we went skiing and he got a little bit of pain he got again pain and the, the anxiety that that brought me was really scary um just just the fear of oh my god he's not going to be able to walk again um it is a long-term thing that we're going to go through and children do come out the exercises, other end exercises rehab um we've medicine. been pch have been amazing i've been at pch every week with cobes as well children hospital. yeah perth children's hospital derek's either been with me or he's looked after the other kids but you know we've had we've got a specialist team that includes um, a physio an OT a psychologist a teacher a nurse his um, and his That's specialist nice. doctor um, and they meet every week and I let alias with them um, he's on a very high dose at the moment just to get his nerves back down um, so the, the nerve blocker so some of the pain might be phantom pain and some of it might be real pain that's the balance that we're, we're trying to get a hold of here so they, they say it's like if someone gets their arm or leg chopped off and they can still feel an itch in their hand even though they haven't got one it's similar to that sort of in a certain way but it's way. not an itch it's like pain a severe pain like yeah. when your son's bawling his eyes out going i just take this pain away from me you know um yeah very scary um so that was that's one of the things that's happened and then my uncle passed away um my i just before christmas um i went to the doctors and i was like i'm not something's not right sent me for an ultrasound and i found out i had two um aneurysms um they operated on one straight away. straight away i got a phone call as i left the doctors we're booking theater for you i was rushed in for an emergency to get it coiled um it was a nine millimeter aneurysm which is i don't know if you're a doctor or what you know about any of that stuff but that is life-threatening it's huge um and i've also got um a bit of i've got from bosis as well um don't know where this came from it just popped out of the blue and we may never have picked up on any of this stuff with Jade or you know even got the right treatment for Kobe if we weren't here well, if we could have Perth. been in the bush and this thing happened with Kobe so yeah. you know we, we we're thankful that we were back in Perth and we got all the medical support that we needed maybe it was supposed to happen maybe not um, if you're a believer in that sort of things I I can't answer that but we're just thankful that we are here and we've been all together and basically yeah the car is so just we, a car. Yeah, like we said. That, like, that, that was done. We didn't care about that. As long as everybody was healthy, that's that's all that mattered to us. So We've had a pretty tough six months. Yeah, the last six months has been pretty shit, but you know I what? I had a bit of a nervous breakdown. <laughs> we, we, uh, we move on, and 2023, um, hopefully the whole year, will be... Uh, hey, mate, look, I just hope for the rest of my life that... I've had enough shit happen to me. That's it. So uh. positive vibes from here on in. And um, but yeah, so that basically wraps up where we are with this video. The new car is still the old car. Um, we didn't. Yeah. We're excited. We're, we're really excited. Just very to, excited. You know, let's just do it. Let's just get out there. Let's just get exploring. Let's do what brings us together and what, what we love doing. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. Anyway. Um, as soon as the car is back, um, we're going to do a bunch of videos of, I know before the incident we were going to do a video of what we travel with, so everything that's in the canopy, um, a video of what's what equipment we have just for the boat, and um, we might even try and do some weights for that sort of stuff as well, just so you get an idea of um, weights of what we're carrying. That is something that we didn't talk about, um, that some people have messaged us about the insurance and the weights and all that. So, oh. We're not overweight. No, but you know, like how insurances don't cover you for weight. So we, you know, do, so, you know, it's so important to be the correct weight because the insurance company, they, 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 will, checked, they, will, they, will they check. checked everything. Yeah, like, they, they will check straight away, but we, never had the, we had never had the caravan on when the incident happened. But even with the caravan on, I mean, we're still not overweight. So 
that's why we built this cast is that we were fully insured in case anything did happen like this. Um, but it's not just weights, it's tire size, it's lift, it's um, aftermarket stuff, it's tunes, it's deletes. If you delete stuff off your car, i.e. DPFs, mine hasn't been deleted. Um, that's why we spent money on this car so that we were 100% legal to be covered by insurance. So lots of you ask us about it saying, you know, um, if you're not legal, you know, if you're overweight, you know, and so say you've got a chopped 200 and you've got five of you sitting in the car and then you've got a full canopy, you're overweight, your insurance company's oh, not. Not necessarily. You, there's a potential chance that you could be overweight. Um, it doesn't take long to get to four and a half ton, especially with a car that weighs close to four ton with the canopy and that on there. But that's that's not for us to dictate to. That's, that's, that's um, we're just telling you that they do weigh, they do measure, and if you are overweight or you have got something illegal on your car, then you know they've got every chance that they will deny this thing. And a lot of people did bag out the insurance company, but ever since the assessors, the senior assessor and the um, the younger fella that's um, looking after the job, ever since they've been on it, they have been absolutely fantastic. Like seriously, they've they've gone to the workshop and checked every one to two weeks they've rang me every one to two weeks and they've told me where it's at um they've seen if we need any con if we've had any concerns um they've they followed up their whole way so the insurance company has been great but it did, did take that initial three months and then it did take a bit of persuasion to get them on the same page as us and speaking to the mechanic well, it but, came down to research and learning the knowledge of yeah, how yeah. it all works and and yeah it's it's always so, good to know also i haven't we haven't oh, oh. Sugar. Jesus. Um, we haven't talked about so we've had a higher car for the last six months we've paid for that out of our own pocket um we didn't have higher car insurance i highly re but in saying it's another that mistake by us we in know. saying that they only cover fifteen hundred dollars of higher car insurance as well most companies so we probably you probably wouldn't have been covered for the whole six months either but anyway so we've had to pay for a higher car for the last Six but the insurance months. company have helped us out with that so they've given us a discount um through their hire car company so you know, again they've gone they've, they've helped us out again so we have to pay for our car and vans or the van to be towed the car to be towed we're, we're out of pocket still a good at the moment currently probably forty five thousand dollars um but we'll get some of that back once the job's finished because of the parts that we brought so we'll get that money some of that money back but um yeah we've that's that's on us we know that we're um we're learning we uh didn't expect this to happen as nobody does with an accident but anyway we're gonna leave it there we've covered everything if you have any more questions um put them in the comments and we will try and get back to you. Do you reckon next week you'll do a bit of a video of maybe having a look at the car? Well, that's it. If you want me to do a video of anything, um, drop it in the comments and uh, I'll do a video of that. Um, if you want to see where the car's at, and do I'll, you want us to I've got some pictures, so I'll post them all up. But yeah, it's just tell, let us know what video you want us to do while we're, um, while we're sitting here waiting for this car. Cool. Within reason, because obviously we've we've only got a small little hire car. We can't do too much except for what we've got on us. So, yeah. yeah. But anyway, um, thanks for watching. Thanks for all your support. Um, thanks for everybody with those beautiful, kind messages. Cheers, guys. See Have you next. See you on the next one. See you later.